I believe that if you are looking to become a nurse but aren't there yet, there are several reasons why nursing may not be for you. In fact, that's part of the reason why nurses get burned out and look into leaving the bedside almost as soon as they begin their practice. I recently ran across an article on Business Insider where nurses revealed the 11 hardest parts of their job, from the death of their patients to not having the time to pee during a shift. So in this video, I'll be going over 10 reasons why you should probably probably not be a nurse and the worst parts of being a nurse. The number one reason why you should probably not be a nurse, it's because it's too taxing on your body. I work in an emergency department and you will be surprised by the number of nurses that come to work complaining of back pain or nurses that had to go on modified leave because of injuries they sustained at work. This doesn't apply to too many positions, but as a nurse, you might be responsible for repositioning your patients, performing bed baths on your patients, all of these things because you don't have enough staff in the department to help you do them. And this can take a toll on your body, so you need to be prepared. If you're working remotely or outside of a hospital setting or a skilled nursing facility and you're working in an outpatient setting like a doctor's office or you're working as a school nurse, in places like these, you're less likely to sustain injuries while at work from poor body mechanics while lifting heavy patients. The number two reason why being a nurse might not be for you is because you need to prepare yourself to work holidays and weekends. Most places you're going to be working at as a nurse are going to require you to work every other weekend because hospitals are open 24 seven. So as a new nurse, you need to be prepared to work either weekends or holidays, if not both, because employers will also require you to work at least one major holiday. That means that if you're spending time with family in the holidays, it's likely not going to be the same holiday every single year because you might have to alternate your holidays. So if you're working Christmas this year, you might have to work New Year next year. However, if you work for a facility like Kaiser, which pays nurses double time and a half if they work a holiday, then you're more likely to have a co-worker want to work your holiday for you. Reason number three why you should probably not be a nurse or nursing might not be for you is because most places in the United States do not pay nurses enough. The median salary for nurses in the US is $77,600. But what that means is that some states are going to pay nurses a lot less than that, while some states are going to pay nurses a lot more than that. However, if you're working in a state like Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, then you should expect your median salary to be on the lower end of that spectrum. On the other hand, if you're working in a state like Massachusetts, New York, or California, then you should expect your median salary to be on the higher end of that spectrum. But when your median salary is higher, then you also need to take into account your cost of living. And yes, you're going to be getting paid lower in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, but the cost of living is also going to be a lot less. But if you're very strategic about where you choose to live in any one of those states, you could end up bringing home more money than the other nurses I mentioned in these states. So at number four, you are going to be one of the first in line to be exposed to communicable diseases. Like many of the healthcare workers that died during this past pandemic of COVID. I personally know at least three people that died during COVID and many of them were young in their 30s and 40s. And if you're working in an emergency department, you are going to be the first in line to make contact with these type of patients. And you have to remember when COVID first came to the US, we didn't even have enough PPE in our inventory to provide to our healthcare workers. But if you're going to be working as a nurse, then you need to be prepared for being the first in line to come into contact with patients that have communicable diseases that we might not have been previously exposed to. Reason number five, why you should probably not be a nurse is because you need Need to be prepared for potentially violent and unsafe working conditions. If you haven't been paying attention to the news recently, there have been several reports of nurses and other healthcare workers either being assaulted or killed in the line of work. We are witnessing elevated, more frequent occurrences of violent patients injuring and even killing hospital employees. On June 2nd, Michael Lewis, who police said killed himself after the rampage in Tulsa, Oklahoma, had just earlier that afternoon legally purchased an AR-15 style rifle. He entered a physician's office building at Tulsa's St. Francis Hospital campus and shot dead his surgeon, another doctor, a receptionist, and a patient in the office building. There's also a recent incident of a jail inmate who shot and killed a security guard at Miami Valley Hospital. Montgomery County jail inmate stealing a security guard's gun, shooting the guard, then shooting and killing himself. We start with breaking news in Conroe where a patient 
Fired shots inside of a hospital. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Let's bring in Ron Trevino now with an update on what happened. Ron. Ulrika, the patient fired shots at EMS workers who were able to quickly disarm the woman. It all took place just before noon at the HCA Conroe Hospital Emergency Room. At 11.42, that patient arrived at the ER. Her arms and legs were secured to the gurney. While doctors were distracted, the patient pulled out a gun from a holster under her dress and fired two rounds. One of the EMS workers disarmed her. As you said, Reka, luckily nobody was hurt. This is something that you need to be prepared for. And if you're working in mental health or with the mentally ill, then you need to be aware that there is always a possibility that these type of patients are going to become violent with the staff. I've mentioned in a previous video some of my experiences with working in New York. And I remember a patient that was restrained to his bed who was so angry that he flipped the bed over and he was laying on the floor while the bed was laying on his back. There was also a patient who was underage and it took over 12 security officers to restrain him. I've had co-workers with broken arms, broken shoulders, broken ribs after being assaulted by our patients. Okay, so reason number six why you might not want to be a nurse is because your license is always on the line. This nurse is on trial for making a tragic mistake. Nurse Radon Devot was charged with reckless homicide in the death of 75-year-old Chaylene Murphy at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville. She was supposed to give her patient a mild sedative, but instead administered the powerful paralyzing agent Vecuronium. Nurses now more than ever are always in fear of losing their license. They are working in conditions where they don't have enough staff or resources to perform their job. The number seven reason why you might not want to be a nurse or you might not be fit to be a nurse is because of the fear of going on break and letting a coworker cover your assignment. Now, personally, this is not me. But when I first became a nurse, I was afraid to go on break because I felt like every time I went on break, I would have to play catch up when I returned. Either that or my patient would have decompensated so much that we would have had to call a rapid response on my patient. And if you don't know what a rapid response is, is when you feel like if you don't act now, your patient is going to decompensate to the point where you're gonna end up doing CPR or the patient is gonna lose their life. So the rapid response team is a team of doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and techs that come to the bedside to help take care of your patient before the patient gets any worse. So as a new nurse, when you go on break, you have to let your coworker cover for you. And many nurses are afraid of doing this because the coworker might not know your patient as well as you do. And they're only going to be covering your patients for the next 30 minutes to one hour. And another thing you should know is that this nurse covering your patients might not put in all of the effort that you would to take care of your patients. One thing you should definitely do is build a good relationship with your coworkers because they will make sure that when you return from your break, you're not left scrambling to fix anything they might have messed up. Here we go to reason number eight why you might not want to be a nurse or nursing might not be for you. As a new grad, you will have to be prepared for the possibility that you will have to work a shift that you likely won't be satisfied with or the possibility that you won't be able to get the shift that you want until you gain some seniority. And this is especially common if you're working in a unionized hospital. A unionized hospital is a hospital that's represented by a union, whereas the counterpart to that is a private hospital where it has no union. So your pay or your benefits are not reliant on how many years you've worked for the organization. And this is definitely going to suck as a new grad. But as you build seniority with your organization, you're going to be able to pick and choose the shift that you want to work, the vacation days you want to take off, or the overtime you want to pick. Up. But if you're working in a privatized facility and they put out a request for additional staff to come in on overtime, then it's going to be a first come first serve basis. All right. So now we're here at reason number nine, why you should not be a nurse or why nursing might not be for you. As a nurse, you have to be willing to adapt to new technologies and advances in your nursing practice. When I went through nursing school, most of our charting was done on paper. However, the facility where I got my first nursing job had just upgraded from paper charting to computerized charting. And I remember when I first started working as a nurse, many of the nurses quit their jobs because they had a hard time adapting to computerized charting. So if you're someone who wants to stick around for the long run, you have to be 
be willing to train and learn to adapt to new technologies and advances in your nursing practice. And the number 10th reason why you probably should not be a nurse or nursing might not be for you is if you can't handle it, you have to be honest with yourself and be willing to walk away from it. And what I mean by that is that you don't want to be known as that nurse who's the most bitter nurse in your department. If you do not like working where you're at, leave. Do not stay in your department and make everybody else miserable. Do not bully anybody else in your department because you're not happy with yourself. I know far too many nurses that continue to work in departments when they are obviously not happy with the department that they work in, they're not happy with themselves, and they're not happy with their lives. So if that's going to be you, then you have to be willing to walk away. Leave the department, leave the facility, or change up your specialty altogether. If you've grown tired of being a bedside nurse, leave the bedside. I work with plenty of other nurses that have gone into real estate. I know a nurse that bought a truck with her husband and was making $30,000 a month. I know a nurse that secured a contract with Procter & Gamble to engrave the company logo and the employees' names in their toolboxes. I know a nurse that left the emergency department to work with Netflix. So you don't have to be stuck at the bedside or in a miserable position. If this video resonated with you, then you might be interested in our recent video where I talk about the history of the nursing shortage and why it's only going to get worse.